represent themselves. And we did not show up as a political party. We showed up as a collection of the people of Uganda. And we are the people power movement before we are NUP. And it's important not to reduce the aspirations of the people of Uganda to particular political parties or to individual politicians. Because when you attach uh, the aspirations of Uganda and reduce them to particular politicians, when those politicians sell out, they will want to make it seem like the people of Uganda have sold out. No, they have not. Yes, there have been efforts on unity. Way before I threw in my heart into the political arena. Many of them have failed and many have registered some success. The question is not giving up. When we, arose, when we rose to the occasion to awaken the people, we wanted to awaken people, not political parties. We know that many politicians sell out and many more will sell out. But when Museveni buys one politician, does not mean that he has uh, solved the, the, the reasons that caused the people to rise up. Yes, it has been his strategy to deny people leadership, to compromise those, those that uh, people have trust in, from religious leaders to cultural leaders, political leaders, and other special interest groupings. But that does not offer any solution because the poverty continues to skyrocket. So, uh, Mr. Chablan, yours is a heart of stone, I should say, that cannot be broken, uh, that cannot be sold out. Because, I mean, we've seen, I would say, the revered opposition politicians that many admired in the times, the likes mm -hmm. of Robert Mao and all of that, yes. who I should say have sold out. Yeah. So, what makes you different? What makes you feel? You can't sell out. I'm looking I, at the questions I, I, that are within yeah. your own movement, the NUP. I don't want to look at myself as a special case. I will look at the idea that we represent as a special case. People don't support me because of me as the individual. They support me and my team because of the idea that we represent, the idea that never dies, you know. And I said it many times, I'll say it again today, that even me, myself, if I started changing my words and left the idea that made people support me massively, they would very happily support anybody else that represents those ideas. So it is not the individuals. That's why people are very quick to dump any politician that, you know, that sells out to the dictatorship and they move on. And the people of Uganda... One thing that we've been able to successfully achieve is massive awakening. Our people are not asleep anymore. They cannot be fooled anymore. They know that it is upon them to take the charge themselves, not any politicians. You gave a good example of Nobat Mao. Nobat Mao used to be very inspirational to us when we were children, when he was a uh, uh, guild president of Makerere, when he was... He used to be such an inspiration to many of us. Say sometimes you have to work with the government if you're to have the inspirations come to the end. That's him. But no, but Mao keeps changing his words. He's the same person that said that when you are paid to be stupid, then your intelligence ceases to matter. It's the same no, but Mao who said that General Museveni, he will only work with you if he can use you as a wheelbarrow. Those were the words of Nobat Mao, the same Nobat Mao now that is boot leaking General Museveni. But like I said, Museveni appeals to two things. He appeals to either your sense of fear or your sense of greed, you know. So some of those people that we used to respect so much maybe reach their breaking point in terms of greed and fear. And that's what they turned into. It's unfortunate, of course, uh, with all due respect, um, I know that those people have their weaknesses, but we are preaching to the people of Uganda to evoke their own strength. We are telling them not to believe in us, not to believe in any politician, but to believe in their ability to change their country, themselves. Mr. Shabran, we shall take another speak from Africa. I'm sure some of you are very young.
Are oh, not born yet when such as you are. These people are news. My name is Rita Kempisa, and today we're having a conversation. What life beneath the West has begun to tour by the NUP leader Robert Chablan. And with me today on the VPN, I have the man himself, uh, Robert Chablan, whom we know mainly, and not mainly, as Bobby Wine. Uh, Mr. Chablan, before we enter for the press, yeah, you actually commenced on this um, tour. You met with um, veteran Kiza yeah. Vest. We're interested in finding out. Will we see him perhaps in one of the tours that you are having? And from the engagement you had with him, you could share with us just a little bit. What kind of discussion did you have? Because I mean, we see, we see you posting today and the following day you started on these tours. Oh, yeah, of course, uh, Dr. Kizabes J remains one of uh, our political mentors. Uh, one of the elders that we always uh, reach out to for wise counsel and uh, you know that uh, meeting we had with him is one of the many that we've been having you know seeking his guidance as well we always share we give him thoughts and he indeed gives us thoughts uh, because it's somebody that you cannot you know, wish away in the political space of Uganda. Um, we continue to work together, and uh, his input has been and continues to be extremely, extremely valuable. Um, whether or not we shall be uh, on the same tour, uh, this tour, I mean, the, the whole struggle should not be limited to this tour. Each of us will keep pushing from their fronts and uh, whenever we can work together we shall embrace the opportunity and work together i will not tell you what we plan to do together with dr kisabesi but please know that there's so much that we plan to do together 
because we still believe in this unity. Mm. Mr. Shab, many, many people, many scholars um, have uh, zeroed to the fact that the position in Uganda has failed because we are limiting the struggle to individuals, that, that whole individualism syndrome. And um, we tend to neglect the ideas that have actually taken us to a new chapter, to a new mm -hmm. approach. Well, they're partially right. But of course, those intellectuals sometimes, me, I don't like them. <laughs> because they talk and talk and talk, and many of them just talk to discourage. And then they go back to their comfort zones. Meanwhile, the nation is rotting. And the same talkers, in most cases, they talk just to discourage. They have not done nothing. They don't do anything. They are the intellectuals that we thought would save us, but they have not. I mean, look at me. I came from my dance hall, and because the so-called lawyers, the, the elites, the intellectuals, were just there. If they are no, if they are not, uh, if they are not seated and, 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 and comfortably, you know, enjoying their lives, they are discouraging. If they are not working for the regime, then they are discouraging the small efforts that common people like myself are, 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 are trying to do to save this country. So those so-called analysts and intellectuals for me, Eva Andia. However, I'll say that many of them tend to speak the truth, although they speak it not in good faith. Yes, it's true that many, many, many times we failed to come together. But they should help us come together not just criticize, castigate, demoralize, and leave it at that. This country belongs to all of us. They are equally responsible, you know. They are equally responsible in offering solutions. So, for me, I believe that much as they talk about the failures of the opposition, um, I think they shouldn't reduce this effort to only the opposition. For example, uh, the young men, the young border border men, who don't even have an, a, an NUP or FDC or DP uh, party membership card. Where are they? What are they? Are they opposition or what? I want to look at them as change-seeking forces. So, for us, we don't look at ourselves as opposition. In any case, we are not opposition. But we are the change, option. We change, want. Which change should be? The border border people and the other Ugandans you are talking of as uh, agents of change, as the people you are working with. And, and yes, the opposition, I should say, you who are seeking the change, who are leading the, on the clear in here, mm. you need to re reawaken me in, in your thoughts. Like I keep saying, look at what has been happening in the FDC. It has mm. been on for months now. Even in your party, NUP, we have seen these tensions that they've said. Mm. And it is said indeed that when these people come, to these two ones that you're moving around with, with the mammoth crowd, they say indeed they only come to listen to the dance hall star, and your message remains at that rally. Well, <laughs> I'm a dance hall star, and that is a plus to me. You cannot take it away from me. Many other politicians, including Museveni, wish they were stars like myself. Museveni has tried it. He has recorded a few songs with his ugly voice. So uh, they wish they had that charisma. They don't have it. So they're trying to undermine it. I have it. I'm thankful to God. Are you trying to tell me that when they go to listen to Museveni, they are going to listen to Emolaro? Yes, they are going to listen to Emolaro. Like they come to listen to this artist who tells them sense. If they, if it was not resourceful, they wouldn't ban my music concerts. So yes, I am that star that people come to listen to. And I use this star voice, not just to entertain them, but to educate them. And I will continue that. Are you educating the opposition? Let's stick to the language. My message is not only for the opposition. You see, Rita, you're trying as much as possible to box me into the opposition corner. <laughs> and I will not take that. You know why? Because me, my message is for all people. Don't reduce us to opposition. Because what if Museven buys the opposition? He bought DP. He bought UPC. You see what is happening to FDC. I've been telling people, do not put your trust in those so-called politicians. Not even myself. Put your trust 
in yourselves you the people of uganda you are the answers you are the architects of your own freedom and your own liberation you know Museven will buy will buy these people you know you remember it during elections he had already bought Museven. in fact in 2016 you remember he said ah by 2021 there will be no opposition probably he had cut a deal with all the parties that were there he didn't know that <laughs> nature and, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and God would bring up a generation that is uncompromising, a generation that I did. So don't box us to opposition. Don't put us in, in the corner of these sellouts, in these uh, professional politicians, the uh, uh, electropreneurs. But you know, Mr. Chaplin, you have to unbox these boxes. Yes. Because I, I know yourself, you've heard these voices. You've seen with the, F the wrangles that have been going on in the FDC. You've yes. heard um, rumors, I should say, where they are, the FDC members are accusing. But those are not you. Accusing you, yes, Lukwang, of taking yes. their members yes. to NUP. Mm -hmm. Stop, you have heard that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will tell you that that's not new. Even when uh, uh, the first thing, the reason why I did not join any party, Abinicio, mm -hmm. is because when I was coming into the political space, there was FDC and there was DP. And DP's worst enemy was FDC. And the other way around, I was wondering. I thought that FDC's enemy is supposed to be Museveni and not DP. And the other way around. But that was not the case. Exactly. So when I came in, you know, I was independent and we started the People Power Movement, which brings everybody together. For us, our mission is not just to make Bobby Wine president, but to remove a dictatorship and give Ugandans a chance to come together and forge a way forward. We tried as much as possible. We had more than 30 meetings in the run-up to the 2021 election, trying to bring these people together. It only became apparent to me that the unity was not going to be possible because many of the leaders of these parties were paid to cause this harmony and this unity. And this played out later when Mao, you know, came blunt. Now it's playing out in the FDC. But I'll tell you that those few characters should not define us. The FDC is much bigger than, 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 than their secretary general, their president. But you know, you know. Sabani, when all these things, the disorganization mm -hmm. is going on, in a way it's also disorganizing the joint forces of change. Yes, it change. does. Also yes, it does, but yes. it does not crush them. The killing dampens the mood of the people, but does not kill it. That's why we don't stop awakening them. While there are efforts to divide us, we are not give, go, giving up on the effort of unity. That's why we see me with Dr. KB, with General Montu, with uh, Ambassador Laro Tunu. We are not giving up. While they compromise others, we are not going to stop working with those that are solid. You know, And of course, there are even some artificial or narratives that are created just to cause this harmony. Recently, they've been trying as much as possible to pit me against my fellow leaders in my party. That's what they do in all other parties. General Seven uses the same template. So it's our duty as leaders to see through his lies and then expose them and then show people how Museveni has been pushing them to the Galibo corner. Yeah. And we continue with these tours that um, you're, you're holding. We have seen the army issue another warning to people who wear the camouflage uniform, to the beret that you're using right now. From your own side, don't you think this is also one of the ways that perhaps they are using to speak for down your tours? Because it will happen if it happens. <coughs> they have one such question. Now they are coming, of course everyone looks at it that way, but now they are coming, like we've seen them in Kasese, uh, whatever, and Berkwes. And we have to say that 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 we can see another scaffold out of that. Right. Yes, Mr. Chaplin, Gang 
USP4 and news. My name is Rita from Africa. Uh, today we're having a conversation as we look to meet the wake up Uganda tour by NUP leader Robert Chaplin. You know, know me as uh, a book one and he's a man of health today. today. Before we went to the program, Mr. Chaplin, the transmission, the, uh, the army has issued a statement among uh, warning people who are using camouflage as they are looking to attack the police. Yes, I read the race there again. We've seen like before where the military has um, uh, raided your offices in Cambodia, they have confiscated uh, your t shirts, the red berries that you use in this tour. Okay. And, and this, of course, in a way, is a message to a number of people who be running up to these crowds, even the first of all, the fear among the people, knowing that, and we have also seen the end result in most cases, people will be arrested, people can even be shot. That is supposed to be a question to the regime. Um, no, because I mean, you, you're preaching. Yeah, let, me, let me put it, it in context. Let me put it day. in context. Yeah. <laughs> Who is causing the separation? Who is beating and killing the people? Um, look, you have seen Andrew Mwenda clad in full military uniform. You see artists every day dressed in military attires. You see many people dressed in military attires. And that's not to say that we dress in any military attire. I am wearing this beret. I keep wearing it. I don't get arrested, but they arrest everybody around me. Does that mean I'm above the law? If there's any law, that, 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 you see, that, that, that's the selective application of the so-called laws. That, that is the corruption. You know, that's the impunity that we have in this, our country. So I'll tell you that uh, first and foremost, for us to be able to traverse the country unhindered by the military or police. It's not because Museveni loves that so much. It's two reasons. One, he is blunt and clear, ashamed. Yes, he's shameless, but it's a clear uh, sense of shame that is hovering over the regime. But most importantly, after Museveni's uh, massacre in November 2020, and after the constant uh, hounding of the opposition, abductions and killing of the people. We took Museveni, his son, and those around him to the International Criminal Court with more than 200 uh, pieces of evidence tendered in. And we are still putting more evidence together. So Museveni knows that the international community is watching him, and this is the community that has been funding him to continue his uh, misrule over the people of Uganda, to continue his regime of blood and national shame. So, he is aware that he's a candidate for the ICC. He knows what happens. So, he probably is trying to behave himself in order to turn down on the pieces of evidence that are coming, uh, you know, 
to add on the petition that, that we put up against him. Probably that is uh, why we've been able to move peacefully so far. Like I said, we are always peaceful and it's, it's, it only gets messy when the police messes it up. Um, coming back to the so-called military uh, stores that they claim we have, they have raided our offices many times, stolen our berets. While every other person is putting on berets, including them, the NRM tried to copy our beret and they made them in yellow. Apparently for them, it's okay to put on berets, but not us. All this they are doing because they are trying to look for any reason to arrest, torture, and incarcerate our supporters. I tell them that we are not going to give up. The law is on our side. All the people they arrested for wearing berets, none of them has been convicted. You know, all of them have been tortured, incarcerated for length of time, some years, but they've been released. So, it's, it's, it's another excuse. It comes out of fear. Yeah. The Electoral Commission has issued its roadmap for the 2026 general election. I would want to find out from you. I'm sure you have read it. Does it answer the questions that were left during the 2021 general election? It doesn't answer any question. We are not so bothered by the Electoral Commission's roadmap because you know what? One of the reasons why they issued that roadmap was probably for them to ensure that the people of Uganda go past the 2021 week election. We have not gone past that election. We won that election and we continue to, you know, to call out the regime for having rigged that, rigged that election. But this national tour also is to show the people of Uganda what they missed when that election was rigged. We had a program, which program we continue to highlight a program of a return to democracy, a return to civilian rule, a program of a revamption of the economy, you know, an absolute fight and crushing of corruption, which corruption General Museveni has been the chief priest of, you know, we are, and many other things that I cannot in very uh, quick uh, minutes, you know, uh, detail, but we are moving around the country showing them what they missed when the election was rigged and reminding them that it is going to continue like that if they don't firmly put their feet down. We are not campaigning for the election because if we had another election under these circumstances, it wouldn't be any difference. We are telling the people of Uganda that nobody else is going to give them a free and fair election but themselves. They must be firm, put their feet down, we are working locally and internationally, knowing that when the international community finally distances itself from, from seven, like it's uh, clearly beginning to, then we will be dealing with a much more weekend Museveni, and our effort to make him fall will be easier. Mr. Chagwani, are you coming back in 2026? The question should be, are you here now? And I would say yes. Are you going to contest for the 2026 general election? We've not looked at 2026 yet. We are looking at now because we want Museveni to fall now. We want to change the circumstances now. We want the, the, the factors to change fundamentally now. So, talking about 2026 is telling our people to relax and wait for 2026. And that would be immoral, that would be wrong. We want to deal with now so that we have you know some success even before 2026 if it reaches it must reach with a very very weakened Museven or a destroyed Museven. but many think with this road tours that you're taking up it's one of the strategies you're trying to position yourself everybody has a right election. everybody has a right to think the way they they think Mr. Chabu, but you ask me you so. ask me because you want to hear what yeah. i'm saying i'm not positioning myself i am positioned already rita you're interviewing the guy who was who defeated Museveni. you know i was elected by the people of uganda so if it was going for another election i know i would beat Museveni or anybody very easily because we've beaten them before 
So I'm not campaigning to be voted. I was voted. I am campaign. I am pushing this campaign of reawakening and pass and self assertion, so that the people of Uganda can be able to defend their will. You know, not just to take them into an election when they are a weakened population. We have to have a vibrant and fired up population. Professor Shabani, how will these Ugandans reawaken their will? Many of them are struggling financially. Yeah. We just have a week or two for children to go back to school. Many of them have no school fees. Many of them can't even afford food. Mm -hmm. They can only eat once a day. And with the World Bank decision to not lend more money to Uganda, it has left many of the people panicking. What solutions do you have for the Ugandans who are struggling financially, economically? And a country like Uganda, where we live, have no money. The country is broke. Ugandans are broke. Maybe for you. It is that brokenness. <laughs> it is that brokenness that emboldened the people of Tunisia to kick away the dictator. It's that brokenness that emboldened and annoyed the people of Sudan and many other places to kick away their dictators. I want the people of Uganda to be angry and to have resolve. That is when they are going to do what they must do. We want the people of Uganda to charge up, to be angry, to get annoyed, to get uncomfortable about the situation, you know. So that is a factor as well. If people were broke and impoverished and they're not getting the leadership to charge and uh, change their circumstances, that would be the unfortunate bit. But they have the leadership that leads them to removing the main cause of their predicament and that is the Museveni dictatorship. What is the solution? First of all, we must remove a regime that is not considering the, the well-being of the people but looking solely on regime maintenance. You know how much do you know how much money Museven uses every day? Two billion shillings. But also you know there have been empowerment programs for the people those are hoaxes. Those are lies. Those are, you know, what Chiwani means. Those are Biwanis. Those are hoaxes. Stated from Mentandikwa, Bonaba Gagaware. Now you have PDM and all that. All those are hoaxes. They are lies. You know, you, people don't need handouts. People need policies that would make them self sustaining. You know, we are rich. We have. Uh, uh, a rich human resource which is not empowered at all people are overtaxed you know uh, that's why they, they they keep running out of the country see how many Ugandans leave the country every day to look for better you know pastures agriculture has fallen completely the economy has been you know hijacked by a few elites you know who are connected to General Museveni and his family. So that and more is supposed to annoy the people and remove this dictatorship so we can be able to realign. You, you, you get my, po my point? Our challenge has been uh, poverty as juxtaposed to extravagance. See how extravagant those that rule over us are. Compare Anita Mongo's house and the Bukedea Health Center. You know, compare how many cars Museveni has as an individual running his office and how many ambulances we have in the country. Compare the money that is spent uh, on security and weapons of destruction as juxtaposed to uh, the budget in the healthcare. Uh, sector compare the salaries of our teachers and their working conditions so all that has to change it only changes when we change the head because the priorities are not right we have to realign our priorities mm. when you talk about priorities what would a country like uganda be prioritizing at the moment if we have to keep afloat economically and with this world bank decision great government is saying they're going to cut too much expenditure what are some of those areas you think we should be focusing on? Corruption. 
crack down on corruption according to you are Ericos, we use 10 we lose 10 trillion every year that we lose to China. sorry we lose about 20 trillion. you see now even i'm even underestimating it 20 trillion lost to corruption we know who the corrupt people are we know who the thieves are they they, they went beyond stealing money they even steal iron sheets these are the people around the seven crack down on corruption and channel that money to help the people that is number one you know number two you know realign on our expenditure why must we spend all that money on administration see how many ministers we have how many ministers did obote or amin have see the the, the presidential advisors they are a disease now those that are in power look at how how their convoys move and how much money they spend so just those two things alone can fundamentally alter our circumstances as the people of Uganda. Then invest in healthcare. Make sure our people don't die stupidly like they are dying. And others, like I said, I would take the whole program just talking about our, 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 our solutions. Shablai, this whole issue of the World Bank decision remains a serious threat to this country and to the people that you lead, the people you want to be out with. Because many of the programs are supported by World Bank, you know, donations and all that. Meaning, a month while I see will suffer as a result of World Bank, you know, not giving us aid anymore. I disagree with you, Rita. Omuntu Wawansi has been suffering because most of that money that is given to us is lost in corruption and patronage. Remember what happened to the COVID money? They stole it. Seven and these people. Remember what happened to the Gavi funds? Stole it. Seven and these people. You know what happens to the money that comes in to support refugees? Stolen. Okay? The only difference is that they've been st stealing the funds that we borrow which funds you and your child, me and my child and our grandchildren are going to pay. They've been stealing it. Now they're stealing taxpayers' money. In any case, they've been stealing 20 trillion of taxpayers' money annually. So, the Munduawansi has been suffering and will continue to suffer because these are thieves. Okay? And I'm being blunt because that is what they are. These are thieves. You know. The international funds were not helping us anyway. Because they were, being, they were being lost in corruption. And those that were not lost in corruption were being used to subjugate us. Myself and my team were moving nation to nation, organization to organization, asking them to stop funding Museveni's regime. We are happy that they are stopping. We also want them to put sanctions on them. We want to weaken the Museveni regime. I repeat it. And we can weaken him. One way of weakening him is to make sure that they don't sponsor his killing. The guns that kill us are given by Americans. The money that he uses to, to, to buy the people to, 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 to compromise uh, those that are uh, speaking the truth against him is given from abroad. Museveni is an agent of neocolonialism, is an agent of, of, of foreigners. So we are asking him, them to stop sponsoring killing to stop sponsoring that regime of national shame. They are stopping and we appreciate. We want them to even put sanctions. All right. yeah. We're going to take another quick short commercial break, but when we do get back, um, I'll encourage all of you to listen again to throw in your comments via Line 33, KSM, and even on my Twitter page, that is Rita Kalibuka. And later on, we shall give you a chance as well. I guess we, uh, Prince also have him called as well um, to ask uh, uh, Robert Chabali if you have any questions. Or also you can share your views and opinions. We'll take another quick shot. Uh, new teams and I think later. 
eh mukwatirie msoka tuve ko mbulango tutuja di unmuting na yeka tingenda muting amko kayala yes yes nebo ne mushalinge mushalinge video mganja bijja ko <laughs> Welcome back. It is still the VPN views people and news. My name is Rita Kambika, and today we are having uh, Robert Chapman, who's the NDP leader, known to many as Bobby Wayne, as we delve into what is lying beneath the wake up to the Uganda tour. Mr. Chapman, the other day I saw a statement from the NDP party indicating that um, you had uh, allegedly received uh, credible information. Um, yeah, there was a plot to take you down when you, when you were in um, Kabali. If I could fit into your intelligence system, who could be against your life and why would they want to kill you? Uh, thank you. It's true, uh, my team and I received uh, uh, information from very credible sources that there was an attempt on my life uh, while on that tour. Actually, uh, that prompted our quick response of, uh, uh, you know, driving back from our country as soon as we are done. In fact, we cut some activities short as well uh, because we had even been antagonized in the first place. We don't take these threats lightly at all. We don't take them lightly because uh, we've had similar threats and they've come to pass. We were, we were warned in Aruba. I was told that there was an attempt on my life. And as it all turned out, uh, I survived narrowly, but my driver did not survive. Uh, the nuclear sink, oh my, may God grant you so, perfect peace. Now, we know that the regime has made attempts on my life numerous times. I've survived gunshots, you know, there are times when they even aimed at me and the bullets went through the windscreen of my car. So they've attempted, taken hard attempts on my life numerous times. Therefore, I cannot treat any uh, threats lightly. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I would want to find out from you, Mr. Chavlan, ordinarily when such threats are issued or when you receive such information, you would have to inform the security officers to do that. The security officers, the same security officers that are responsible of having tried to eliminate me. Are you not aware that it is the SFC that shot and killed Yasin Kaoma? Are you not aware that it's the military that ran over uh, Frank centers and killed him? Are you not aware that it is the Uganda police that killed Rita Nabu Kenya? Are you not aware of that? 
in a legal and moral situation. But as of now, when we know that the, 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 that the chief murderer, who is General Museven himself, is presiding over a system, then that system is rotten. And we opt for other means. We would have gone to Ugandan court. Why do you think we've taken Museven to the International Criminal Court? Because all the courts here in Uganda are muzzled. So you cannot seek <laughs> refuge from the same uh, animal that's trying to eat you. However, we expose them because I know that I cannot, you know, uh, fight against Museveni uh, violently because he has all the guns and all that. But by exposing him internationally, in a way, it keeps me alive tentatively. But even when they finally succeed in eliminating me, I want the whole world to know who is after my life. And that is Museveni and his son. The same people you oppose, the same system that you are trashing, is the same system that you went to run into court in 2021 when you felt you had been denied your discharge. If you marked my words, I, am, I said and I maintain it today that we were going to that court to get either of the two things. One, justice or to strip it naked. And indeed, the justice system was exposed. You saw just yesterday or the day before yesterday, Justice Chisache resigned from the Supreme Court because it was legal, whatever they're doing, they were doing was illegal and criminal. Whatever the Chief Justice of Winnie was doing was illegal and criminal, and he was challenged, and he behaved in a very, very, very... Uh, 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 disgusting way, a way that undermines the judiciary. So our judiciary has been put to shame, courtesy of the Chief Justice and all those, all in the name of defending the sitting regime. Chagwanya, I'm very comment and further comment. Yeah. When the NEP party put out a statement claiming that you received European diplomatic sources of that plan to tempt on your life, mm -hmm. you mentioned nobody. Now, and I'll read the mm -hmm. Colonialism came through one region. Coming back to the same region, it says in both European backers, no sisters. Well, <laughs> I don't blame Nobat Mao, I only blame those that take him serious. You know, uh, when Nobat Mao is dealing with uh, uh, the international community, it's not colonialism. Okay, when Museveni went to Sweden uh, to be assisted in the fight against me in Obote, it was not colonialism. But when the, international, when the international community, you know, warns the regime about an impending terrorist attack, that is not colonialism. But when they warn me about an attack on my life, that is colonialism. I, blame, I don't blame Mao. I blame those that take him serious. But like I said, it was his own court that if you are paid to be a fool, your intelligence ceases to matter. Oh, Mr. Robert Chavani, I guess you have a call on line? Hello? Yes, good morning. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hello, good morning. This is 933 KFM. Yes, good morning. What's your name and where are you calling from? Let's do this. We have another call online. Yes, good morning. What's your name once again and what's your view or opinion? Yes. Yes, your name once again? 
Sorry, I'm going to go first. Okay. Do you have another call now or now? Good morning. What's your name? Where are you calling from? What's your view or opinion? Yes, I don't. Oh, wow. Thank you. Things goes all right now. We have more too? All right. Um, good morning, your name, your quick view. Yes, quick. Good. Please go right ahead with your question, view or opinion. Choose any. They're both here. 